This has got to be the most asked about omnibus on this channel. What's going on guys, Gem Mint here, and today we're going to take a look at the Dark Knight's Metal Omnibus by Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo from DC Comics. Now this has to be the most asked about omnibus in the comments section on this channel, and I figure because this channel has a good mix of comic book readers, omnibus collectors, and statue collectors who are all interested in Dark Knight's Metal. Recently I read and reviewed the Absolute Edition for Dark Knight's Metal, and I was saying in that video that it really lacked those tie-ins, making the story a little bit hard to follow. So today we're going to see what the Omnibus collects, how it's mapped out, and the construction of this book. So let's jump into it. Alright, so here goes the dust jacket. It's got kind of a matte finish to it. The gray areas kind of shine, a la Dark Knight's Metal. Uh, Scott Snyder, Greg Capullo, you got Batman on the front with the different versions of Batman with those logos surrounding him. Here we have the spine and the back of the dust jacket. Retailing $150 seems a little bit on the high end considering how thin of an omnibus it is and kind of newer material. You've got Devastator, The Drown, The Red Death, Murder Machine, Dawnbreaker, and The Merciless. A quick biography on the story and what it collects. The interior has that same kind of shiny metal with those logos and a biography on Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo. Then we have the actual hardcover itself, the same type of metal great graphics that we've seen in the Absolute Edition, but this one is not raised or have any type of effect to it, just kind of an image here. As we flip open, similar metal type of cover page, Dark Knight's Metal Omnibus. Here we have the credits, the writers, pencilers, inkers, colorists, letterers, and more. Then we have the table of contents. So this is where I prefer the omnibus format over the absolute editions because you get the main story, as you can see, Dark Knight's Metal 1 and 2, but then you have those essential tie-ins in between the main story. So it looks like this is mapped out with a better reading order than Marvel Event Omnibus. Jumping into the Forge, we have the introduction. As we've seen in the Absolute Edition, they did include a couple of tie-ins. It has a table of contents, no page numbers here, so not really sure how much that is gonna help. As you can see, we have the main story, we have the tie-ins, and I think that's really essential for this one. If you guys caught my Absolute review, where I recently did a read-through of the main story, you really miss a lot without having those tie-ins. So having the Teen Titans stuff, introducing the Batman Who Laughs, the Nightwing tie-in and all of those, it really adds a lot more build-up to the story and it gives it more stakes. Just fleshing it out. Look, we didn't even have uh, the Robin Crows in the main storyline. So that's stuff that you're only gonna get in the collected edition omnibus. Moving through here, we're gonna see a lot of stuff that we didn't get to see in the absolute edition. A perfect example right here. I, I wish it did have the page numbers so that we can kind of go back and correlate it without having to literally count page for page. Uh, here we have the drowned. So you had all these one shots really focusing in and giving depth and origin stories to those different versions of the Batman. All of that stuff is not included in the uh, main story. So that's kind of where I feel this one is much more essential. Here we have the Merciless and we learn how uh, Bruce Wayne ends up becoming Ares, the God of War, the Devastator, which is the Doomsday hybrid. There you go. So the Absolute Edition, they like all of them, they look better. They're a little bit larger. They're a little bit more uh, of a premiere format, but the content is what I'm all for. So the Omnibus will have more content and that's what we're getting here. This is going to be the Red Death stuff. Definitely essential. Not gonna talk about the story. I recently just did the Absolute Edition where we went in depth about the story here. But uh, like I said during that review, you really lose a lot not having the tie-ins when Red Death becomes the Gold Death. Uh, so we have some bonus material here. The variant cover gallery. Got some Jim Lee, Scott Williams artwork here. Got some Andy Kubert goodness. So more Andy, John Romita Jr., Tony S. Daniel, Francisco Matina. Beautiful artwork by Francisco Matina. Dang. All right, after the variants, we have some character designs. Barbados. 
here are our twisted versions of Bruce Wayne or Bryce Wayne in some cases. See, I never really knew what to call them. The Nightmare Batman. Okay, that makes sense. All right, so then we have some pencils, some more biographies here, and that's it for the Omni. That Spider-Man booth is in open enrollment for their February subscription box. Not only will you get five comics at random with a retail value of $100, but you'll also get two exclusives limited to this box. Both of them are Ninja Funk 1 Second Prince, the Skrillex rookie card, and the Dip rookie card variant. These are limited to 100 copies each, 50 for the foils, and 50 for the medals. Again, these are only available through ThatSpiderManBooth.com via their subscription box. Check them out today. I picked this one up from organicpricebooks.com. If you guys purchase anything on there, make sure to use code GEMMINT. It'll save you two bucks. And that's it for the Omnibus. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this Omnibus. It collects all of those one shots, giving the backstory and origin on the Nightmare Batman. But I do wish that it had the Batman Who Laughs miniseries, giving us some of the Grim Knight stuff. Maybe we'll get something with a Dark Knight's Death Metal Omnibus. But either way, a quick overview on this. Let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. Appreciate you watching. Stay minty fresh. Peace.